Well, as you can see, I'm pulling apart a PDK transmission. This transmission came from a Cayman GDS that was crashed at the track. The bloke who has very generously donated it to me basically picked it up after it had been crashed. He went and bought another one from the States that had also been crashed and turned uh, those two cars into one serviceable Cayman GDS, so hats off to him. But he had this lying around and he asked me if I wanted to pull it apart and put some stuff online and obviously I've jumped at the chance because there is very little information about these transmissions and I'd like to get as much out there as I possibly can. This is obviously the one out of either a Boxster or a Cayman. The one from a 911 is going to be very similar to this except a lot of it is a mirror image because of the reverse mounting in the car. Uh, but the general construction, the valve body, all that sort of stuff is going to be the same. This is obviously not going to be the same as one out of a Panamera or a McCann. Um, so uh, it's only for the, the sports cars. As you can see, I've started to pull a lot of stuff out of here. This surprised me how easy this was to get out. I didn't have a manual or anything, and it's just like a big Lego set, just one thing after the other. So I've got the pan back on at the moment just to protect the bottom there, but you know, differential drive shafts, everything up the front, including pump, the intermediate plate, valve bindings, all out and pulled apart over here. Um, I pulled the rear casing off and to get up the electronics at the back here just to see how that was put together. And to be honest, all of that is relatively simple. So what I plan to do over the next you know, weeks and months is to dive into this a, a lot more closely, look at all the maintenance procedures of how you would do a lot of these tasks and put some videos up online. Um, and hopefully in the future I'd like to get the, the gear set out of this. This looks like a bit of an effort. It looks like it's pressed into the front bearing and also pressed into the casing. So it's going to take a little bit of effort to get that out. Also very heavy compared to the automatic transmissions that I'm used to working with. These gear sets are heavy. So I don't have a whole bunch of industrial, I don't have any industrial kit here to try and lift heavy stuff out. So we'll see how we go with that. But the nice thing is that the vast majority of maintenance that you're going to do to these transmissions is all over there, the stuff that I've already removed. All the electronics, clutch, valve body, uh, etc. And all of the, the seals are easily accessible and easily replaced if required. Uh, something that did turn out that was a little bit interesting with these is the the big bearings at the rear, so there are two on the two shafts, you can see those in the rear casing there. And the one single on the larger of the two uh, input shafts, they're sealed bearings, they're not lubricated bearings, which is what everything else is inside. And uh, that was a bit of a surprise because uh, that's going to be a vulnerability over time, uh, in my opinion, and replacing those might be something you may want to consider doing uh, as the, the transmissions age, I'd be interested to get people's opinion on sort of what kilometre or, or mileage you would think that would be appropriate. But uh, the bearings themselves, they're just pressed into the rear. There's covers, I've removed those on the rear. And you can pre press those out and replace those. The problem with these bearings though is they aren't listed as a line item. They're an NSK bearing. And the designation looks like it's only for these transmissions. Whether or not that is just a different uh, designation just for these, and there is a, a bearing that is exactly the same that would fit, who knows? But replacing those should be easy. Replacing that one is going to be hard. The problem with the one at the front here, though, is the whole gear set needs to come out because it needs to be removed, so that can be pulled out, and then everything needs to be pressed back in again. So um, I'll have a look at how that might be done uh, as time goes on. Uh, but for the moment, I'm just going to concentrate and make some videos on what's over here. One of the things that's interesting about the transmission is that it's covered in aluminium screws. This presents a bunch of problems in that, firstly, they're difficult to source, they're difficult to torque, they're one-time use only. I initially thought that the reason they were using it because it might be a magnesium casing. It's not. It's a box standard aluminium casing. Uh, and it's the same sort of metal that they use on all their other transmissions, ZF. Uh, so you quite happily, I reckon, use steel screws and just use standard torques for those. But that's something I'll dive into a little bit more deeply uh, later on as well. So, um, over the next weeks and months, expect me to just dig into this a little bit more deeply, put out some more videos, hopefully start a discussion about 
you know, how to fix these things, keep them on the road for much, much longer, because like so many Porsches in the past, I think these cars uh, need to stay on the road for a long time.